Hi, welcome to the next channel. So often I get uh, students who are wondering about how to start uh, or get into network software development. Uh, they generally uh, see this uh, uh, job requirement and uh, they see this uh, uh, you know job uh, description and then they mention about uh, uh, guys who are good in uh, L2 L3 protocols and routing protocols and stuff like that along with uh, you know programming uh, uh, basics or expertise in uh, uh, programming languages especially C or C++ and stuff like that so uh, I generally mention that uh, you need to start with uh, of course you should be good in uh, general uh, systems uh, development uh, and other than that you should be good in uh, networking and then finally you should be good at uh, you know uh, networking uh, uh, protocols as well as network uh, protocol stack and rfcs and stuff like that so so this is the reason i covered earlier an episode on uh, quagga uh, the quagga is a routing suit meant for uh, linux and any unix like operating system it is also uh, available in uh, free bhd and stuff like that so it is uh, quite uh, popular uh, as i said earlier before quagga there was a zebra and uh, now the commercial uh, uh, you know variant of quagga uh, which is also founded by the same uh, founder who is uh, uh, who have done uh, zebra is uh, a co-founder of uh, ip infusion and uh, their commercial uh, spin is uh, zeboys so there are chances if you are getting a job if you are working in uh, dynamic routing protocols uh, uh, especially uh, 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 like any network appliance or a product which uses ZEPOS obviously it will have some or other architecture which resembles like Zebra or Quagga so this is the reason I just gave a overview in the first episode and also I have done a very quick code walk so the first episode I have not done a, a detailed code walk which is when I thought in this episode I can cover about the same and also this gives a sort of idea that how a L3 uh, protocol network stack is architected because you should understand uh, routing is all about uh, uh, network layer uh, because anything which deals with network layer it deals with logical addressing of your network uh, packets or data so uh, it's a perfect example of a l3 uh, protocol uh, stack and in this case uh, for quagga there are various uh, routing protocols uh, you have uh, rip and uh, ospf and several other protocols so you should understand all these protocols are meant for uh, you know layer 3 part of that so any router works in uh, l3 level uh, unless until it has some type of uh, uh, extra features like uh, uh, you know layer 4 filtering or layer 7 uh, filtering and ids ips and stuff like that then it is going to work in all layers okay so if you are very new into networking you should imagine a switch works in the layer 2 but uh, conditions apply uh, there are cases uh, if the switch has other uh, special features so then it may work in layer 3 also so you should understand it all depends how they architect a product so typically a switch works in layer 2 that is enough for a beginner you don't need to break your head okay if you are an advanced uh, uh, a developer or an advanced uh, uh, you know uh, expert or uh, in the industry for some time then you will start realizing it is not strictly layer 2 also sometimes it depends conditions apply based on the features same way a router works in layer 3 of course a router works in layer 2 because it has to do uh, basically uh, layer 3 is on the top of layer 2 or the data link layer so router works in layer 3 and as well as layer 2 but again conditions apply you may have some routers with special qas features and it, uh, it may have special uh, firewalling and stuff like that in that case you need to touch that layer 4 part of course you will do uh, something like if the router have a feature like a proxy and other stuff uh, you know you need to do some sort of you know port mapping and stuff so of course in that way when you touch any time a layer 4 port like udp or tcp port so it works in layer 4 also so it is a layer 3 device but conditions apply it is not a strictly layer 3 device depends on the features and the router have any special features like application layer um, uh, filtering and uh, monitoring and uh, some type of application firewall uh, stuff and other stuff then it should work in all layers so in this case uh, uh, this is why a beginner should not get confused it's just a layer 3 device you can just imagine that way and try start learning about these things
so quagga is quite interesting that's why i mentioned uh, if you are any time thinking about uh, you know layer 3 layer 2 and uh, network protocol software development and stuff like that start with quagga uh, because it has this uh, roots its roots in uh, zebra and uh, zebra the commercial spin of zebra is the zebos which you know the ip infusion sells that stack or licenses it their stack to many products across the industry so whenever uh, you buy uh any manageable uh, uh, you know switch or even a router or something from uh, any other company other than you know cisco or juniper because uh, uh, juniper have their own operating system cisco have their ios and stuff so anyway uh, if you are buying it from any other vendor chances are that it may have the koga uh, or i'm sorry the zebos stack so that's what so uh, if you uh, dive down uh, to the stack uh, i have given a very quick overview of the source code in the earlier episode this episode we just go a little bit in depth and then this next episode we can do a, a sort of a demo so that we will kind of get a taste of how it overall works okay so for a demo i need to have some three four systems so that you can get that demonstration of how the overall routing happens so let's not go about the demo part let's just analyze the source code part still because demo anywhere you can anyway find it in internet also and you can set it up but having said that i may do a demo in my way but uh, yeah anyway so this episode i want to focus on the source code part okay. so if you hop on uh, you can see here it has all this uh, folders and the zebra have uh, many uh, important components so the base components of that uh, zebra uh, if you check the architecture you should find somewhat like this okay zebra zebra routing stack architecture so you will get a sort of you know block diagram so if it is there we can use otherwise i can redraw okay so let's see yeah something like this so you have this uh, base uh, zebra and then on top of zebra uh, daemon there are other daemons which will uh, work okay so if you are enabling uh, rip alone the rip daemon runs if you are enabling ospf you can enable you can selectively enable whichever daemon you want and uh, stuff okay so this is the sort of fundamental uh, overall high level design of this architecture so that is why uh, if you now back hop on to the source code uh, yeah this is not the stack yeah i think this is more than enough this gives a sort of you know overview so if you now hop on to this uh, source code you can see the zebra is quite important it has that overall uh, important components of the same and uh, after that we can take an example like you have various uh, routing protocol stack and in that you have this uh, uh you know ribd but before going there you can also find uh, an important uh, or interesting uh, uh you know a folder like this library and this has that base level uh, uh, data structures and uh, apis for those uh, you know each data structure so this is quite interesting this is something you need to <coughs> explore suppose you have some routing table a generic routing table and uh, let it be in rip or ospf but it's a generic routing table those type of stuff as well as some linked list and those kind of stuff are you know put inside this library you know folder so that is why you can see here each file have a very bare minimum uh, uh, functionality it provides and that way if you go here you can find this route map and you have this uh, various other stuff okay so it is quite important uh, you have this uh, if dot c and this deals with some type of interface list or something like that and uh, stuff like that so even before we explore this extensively we just hop on to this uh, example like uh, you know ripd because from here we can see where a specific data structure is used and there we can find the references in the lib folder or else in the you know zebra folder okay so that's what so if you come here maybe we can go to this uh, ripd.c uh, it looks like this is the main uh, file for this uh, rim uh, rip protocol uh, we can also find if this contains the main let's see i need the main of api uh, this doesn't have uh, is it uh, rip d because it is a daemon uh, rip interface rip zebra okay if not we can go to the folder and we can search okay cd rip c 
cd rip d grep main yeah rip main uh, dot c you can see there rip underscore main dot c hopefully i think we can find it over there so let's do this uh, i am searching for this main api so let's see if something matches it's not matching maybe they have written in a different way let's go here it's not this way so yeah you can see here they have given a space after this main so this of course contains a main uh, api for this particular daemon so that's why i'm saying each one is a separate daemon and they communicate with uh, some type of ipc so let's also explore what uh, what what is the kind of this ipc they communicate as we go in the upcoming episodes okay so you can see here it has this main and it checks all this uh, command line uh, options or else the configuration file options uh, that is fine and uh, as a part of this uh, you can see uh, the main uh, functionalities in this uh, ribd.c uh, so that is one thing and uh, if you go here a little bit in the top you can find it has this uh, interesting apis okay so let's just little move up so this is how you can uh, do a very quick code walk okay you don't need to kind of explore uh, from main where it goes and from there where it goes that is one type of approach you can do and other type of approach is you should go to the main uh, functionality and then from there you can go to the data structures and other like that lib folder uh data structures and apis you should not start from lib folder and then come here it is just foolishness okay so if you are new to code walk okay I, this is also something i told uh, in many videos many people i imagine if i get a job as a software developer the day one they will give a job to do some design of new stuff and uh, working on a new project and stuff like that this is completely not possible okay so you don't you are not an architect or you are some type of experienced person so initially they may give you some very basic stuff for a couple of years like uh, they may ask you to do some bug fixes so they may ask you luckily i have not into that but i'm generally saying they may ask you to do some working on existing stack or something existing project if you are getting recruited of course you need to deal with the existing source code so 90% of the time you will read the source code and you will try to understand the source code rather than you write the source code so get away out of this confusion unless until you have a company yourself you don't have any sort of freedom you are just a slave for the company you are recruited for and uh, 99% of the time so you will be working on going through the source code of some source code it will be some proprietary ip uh, if you are in cisco you will be dealing with some cisco ios or something like that it will be their proprietary ip if you are in juniper their proprietary ip so stuff like that so you will be working on some existing source code it will take a lot of time for you to understand that as a beginner this is a kind of ongoing process so the reading the code is more important than writing the code so get out of your college assumptions so you will not be placed in anywhere from day one no one is going to give you something asking you to deliver something completely new stuff so that is impossible okay unless until you start your own company or you start your own uh, you know project and uh, work yourself some open source project or anything as such so other otherwise it is not at all possible okay that is why uh, follow these tips when you do a source code walk which is also the reason the most of my episodes in my channel are meant for advanced users or some type of intermediate users 99% of the time you should spend on uh, how smartly you can able to uh, learn an existing source code because sometimes you will learn the architectural aspects of the same if you go through the kernel source you will know the architectural aspects of kernel source by going through the source code you should be able to map its block diagram in your mind okay there is no high level design available low level design available for this type of sometimes any open source project they are giving the source code it is up to you to kind of decode this and try to understand so source itself you have there is no need of pseudo code there is no need of flow charts and all this software life cycle bullshit what you learnt in your college so come out of that main tenants are uh, you know working on any existing uh, stack and you may 
put new features maybe sometime they may ask you to add new features of course you may get that down the lane once you join a company so that again is not going to come you know next month onwards it may come after six months or else maybe after couple of years so this is what so get out of that sort of illusion get away of that all that assumptions okay so you focus on how do you do that code work so that is why i'm saying uh, you should not much start from this main api and trying to go inside because main api is like somewhere it starts and then it checks a lot of command line arguments and other it will do that registering signals and other stuff if it is a user space code it will also do some uh, it will also do some uh, uh, registration of uh, threads and other stuff in my code i do that uh, Uh, some people may do those things in uh, other uh, internal api so this is why main is not a easy place to start with you can have a look once but you will understand that um, at the max main may have uh, some uh, you know five to 10 lines of code and that's about it so for, but from there it goes inside 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 uh, somewhere uh, down the lane uh, it will touch all the aspects of your uh, you know the source code whatever you are looking for so this is why so this is quite apparent you have this rip and if you see here there are some data structures like rip event and uh, stuff like that and uh, if you go somewhere here you see here route node is there an interesting data structure and uh, uh, like that if you explore uh, uh, you can uh, you know go through other uh, data structure uh, uh, data structures okay so that's what so we can uh, do one thing is uh, we can uh, even explore this uh, data structure like route node we see where it is uh, in the uh, you know lib folder um, uh, in this case i was earlier before even shooting this episode i was uh, i stumbled across in uh, data structure called uh, you know uh, route table uh, it is inside as you can see here it is inside uh, let's check the rip aspect it is inside this ripd.h and if you go here you can see here if you go to the ripd.h you, you it is the corresponding uh, ripd.c files uh, you know header file so you can see here if you go here it has this uh, some defaults uh, in hash defines or uh, macros and uh, below you have this uh, rip the main data structure of the rip Uh, protocol uh, stack and inside the rip you can see here it has this uh, you know the version stuff and other than that it has this uh, couple of routing table entries okay so other than that even for the neighbor uh, discovery it has this uh, same route table entry so that is why you need to figure out what is this important uh, uh, data structure is because this data structure may get reused for other uh, uh, protocols as well okay so which is why when i check this route table i can able to see rip is using it ospf is using it and uh, even this ospf underscore spf and stuff like that so it looks like it is a generic route table entry data structure so that is why so if that is the case what we can do is so we can see where is this struct route table entry is so that we will understand what this data structure might look like okay so again uh, in this grep if i somewhere traverse okay you can uh, go a bit top and uh, you can see here it has this lib table dot h and somewhere it looks like maybe this contains this uh, data structure definition so this gives a clue but this is not so easy like what we have done in the kernel part and i'm not a much fan of that c tags or whatever they use with uh, you know vim editor or vi editor so i like to do something like this primitive but i can able to accomplish what i'm looking for okay so lib table dot h we can hop on to that uh, you know file you can see here this is the lib folder and the table dot h we can hop on to this file so you can see here it has this two data structures uh, looks like you have this uh, forward declaration so you have this uh, route node and as well as route table you must have seen route node inside this rip d.c so you can see here somewhere it has this uh, route node references okay uh, if i search uh, uh, route underscore node yeah you can see it has this uh, references i'm not sure what is the difference between a route node and the rip table entry okay so we can explore in this data structure you have this forward uh, declaration for both 
and if you come down you can see here it has this uh, uh, definition of this uh, route table uh, the main uh, structure the data structure so you have this uh, route table and inside that it looks like there is an entry for route node and uh, that's about it and you, you have this other uh, stuff so which is something it gives a sort of vague idea it doesn't give that you know clear picture yet because you are trying to read some third party source which is not done by you and you don't have any sort of documentation uh, like uh, you know uh, functional spec or else uh, lld or i mean to say low level uh, documentation or high, high level documentation anyway we can little bit get some idea from that you know <laughs> architectural pictures but we don't have anything other than that okay so this gives a sort of a hint you have this it has this route node and if you explore what is this route node we can find out what is this route node is all about so we can uh, scroll down and uh, we see where it has been defined uh, struct uh, this is looking like an api uh, we see where it is defined yeah you can see here it is defined here uh, each routing entry so this looks like a routing entry you have this left and right and you have that link so we need to explore what uh, what is that infers okay so uh, we need to see what is this link is all about okay so yeah it takes some time and uh, define hash define this is a link of zero i'm not sure is that an ip or what it is all about okay so that's what so anyway we go back to this uh, route table stuff okay so we can uh, get here we have this inside it has this route table delegate underscore t and you have this uh, delegate and then uh, you have this route node let's see if this data structure is in which place okay so type the struct uh, you have this uh, delegate and this is uh, doing this and uh, yeah 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 you have this uh, struct i'm not sure this is uh, coming from outside or what actually so we need to explore uh, yeah of course it takes time and apart from that uh, if you go back to this uh, uh, ribd.h so that way you have one uh, important uh, routing information base so you have this route table and then you have this only static uh, routing information another uh, reference to that uh, route table is there and then for the neighbor you have this uh, rip neighbor so again it has that entry so which tells that we need to explore uh, much in depth or much seriously route table and then as well as it's inside route node data structure so that is what so the route node data structure i'm not sure about the link which again you need to explore what is that is all about okay so that is what other than that you can see here there are some control uh, parameters like timers and stuff and uh, of course uh, these things uh, have to send uh, periodic keep alive and updates uh, neighbor discovery and stuff so you may have some control uh, data for that you know holding all this uh, session like you know uh, control logic okay so it has that and uh, yeah below that it has this uh, yeah distance uh, the route table distance stuff and even for the distance you can see here they are using the same uh, data structure so other than that there are other data types uh, in this case being used uh, default information route map and uh, stuff like that so yeah so uh, apart from that they have defined a struct called rte so rip routing table entry so they are calling as rt and for the rip packet structure you can see here you have this struct rip underscore packet so from there you may uh, use this uh, data structure to build and construct and uh, send and receive the packet so this is what something i have once uh, discussed about how a network protocol stack is architected in general you may have some rx path and the tx path and then you may have some fsm uh, may not be everyone may call that as fsm uh, it again depends and stuff like that so in case if you are new to the same i suggest you to watch this uh, video episode within this uh, network protocol uh, stuff so this is uh, something i started this series quite a long 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 ago so in case if the old videos are not that interesting like this recent videos it is fine because i'm not uh, still able to focus and talk due to the external noise and i'm also new to this uh, uh, you know camera and uh, setting up the camera and uh, several things and uh, of course i was doing it uh, in front of that whiteboard and stuff but still having said that you will get definitely a lot of you know technical context even in such videos okay so 
you can go through the same once i did an episode about how a stack is you know designed so parser development how it is built and sold this is one context yeah network stack design and architecture so i recommend you to go through the same uh, let me just mute this somewhere if you go in the middle you can see there uh, i was uh, discussing about uh, uh, the network stack architecture so this is why uh, if you uh, correspond this architecture context or the big picture with this whatever source code you are uh, seeing in that you know quagga or you know zebra stack it should correspond okay so this is what so let me pause here somewhere uh, as you can see here uh, the lighting is not controlled properly in that video and i have not also done much of uh, you know post production edits and stuff so of course it will have some type of you know degraded video quality but still the uh, uh, technical uh, context whatever i have discussed it is going to be still valuable in case if you are looking for an information like this okay so you can see here uh, i have mentioned this uh, block diagram you have this rx path and in the rx path you, you should parse the packets and put it into some data structure and then uh, feed it to the fsm so fsm you cannot uh, always call uh, anything you process the packets as fsm they can call anything as such but in general this is like an fsm you get the packet and you need to see what to do with that packet um, if you are getting some tcp syn packet i need to send some synac or something so that the state machine decides okay so that is what so if you uh, same way if you get some udp uh, packet and uh, there is no udp port registered in my system as a udp listening server or something i need to send some icmp you know um, error packet uh, uh, reply for that udp packet so this is what an fsm does so if you get some data what to do with the data and how to respond it to the external world and sometimes you can just drop that incoming packets and keep quiet actually so that's what you have this fsm and the fsm decides if it wants to send back any reply it is going to construct that packet a reply packet and then it is going to send it back so it's how any network stack is architected more or less so that is why if you go to the source code you can see here it has this rip packet and which means if you search this rip packet you will find some corresponding uh, apis for this to construct and send the packets okay so rip buff buffer to read rip packet see uh, it is coming to that whatever i have discussed in that whiteboard uh, of my old video so this is released around uh, yeah 2016 so it is shot in the same camera but one thing is i'm not quite good at uh, you know doing uh, videos and as well as setting the camera or even doing the post production or edits of that you know video changing the contrast and brightness levels and stuff so anyway so you can see here it is coming to this aspect and even more if you go down you can start finding out any apis which may take this and um, like this dot uh, c file you can see here rip packet dump and it is taking that api and uh, it is uh, you know uh, doing whatever it is so so that is what this can be uh, used to uh, uh, construct or send packet it depends and uh, things like that so of course we can go to that context in the upcoming episode so with that i think uh, some of the important uh, uh, data structures and apis i have covered uh, it's not some of the important i have discussed very few data structures in this episode and you can see as you go deeper you have this rip interface this is also important because which interfaces uh, you have configured for this uh, rip uh, dynamic routing protocol should also be configured as a part of this so i think this handles the same and uh, uh, you can see there you have this enable network disable network all this uh, i mean enable network and it will have a value whether it is enabled or not and uh, and also enable if the interface is enabled and it is running and all that state is maintained here uh, because again if you explore any uh, uh, ccna books uh, they will discuss about uh, router rip and then uh, uh, you will have this command like rip enable or something like that so this will exactly correspond to that type of commands whatever you type even for quagga or zebra whatever you type in that uh, vtysh uh, terminal it will uh, correspond to this uh, you know uh, 
the data structure uh, configuration variables or this member variables within that struct okay so that's what um, again uh, it has various other stuff let's not go much in depth and there is something called as repair and md5 and stuff yeah you have this important apis like you can see here rip init reset clean and stuff so somewhere if you now go back to this main and once uh, it is initialized and stuff like that it will somehow call this uh, initialization uh, variable uh, apis i mean this uh, of course uh, when you do via vt uh, vty sh or terminal or else you have got a configuration file so based on the configuration file if everything is set and then uh, now uh, you know it has to be initialized the uh, uh, execute context or running context of that uh, you know rip uh, daemon uh, service have to be initialized it may call those apis okay so that is what so this is quite interesting you can see here it has all these uh, important apis so that is why you can see here it has this external references which means the external modules can uh, uh, use these apis these are exposed to that external modules so obviously to support this you can find its uh, source code for each of this api i think in this ripd.c so let us explore the same uh, you can see here it has this uh, rip init and it has this source code we don't discuss in this episode it will go much in depth and moreover even i am uh, doing a code walk of the same so i am not yet done and uh, whereas in this case of rip reset uh, let's see if it is also in this file yeah you can see here it has most of these APIs are covered here. Uh, so these are the external APIs which are exposed to that other modules. So based on this APIs, uh, you have this main components are designed here. So you can see here you have this uh, uh, rip D, rip D, and you have this uh, rip uh, zebra. So if you explore here, it will have much higher level APIs which may use this base APIs and this base APIs may use even more base APIs uh, which are in the lib folder and stuff. So this is how any uh, uh, production level code is, <laughs> code is written. So this is what if you are very new to software development, this is something you should understand. This is how it goes in depth. Okay, this is not like uh, typically you write some college code. This is how it goes. So in case if you are a beginner, this is a note for you. In case if you are in the industry or if you are in uh, software development for many years, then it is something you are already aware of. So since my videos are watched by someone who is around 10 plus years in the industry or else even some architect may watch or else just a beginner or else i often uh, get mails from folks who are doing their uh, uh, you know phd uh, you know uh, uh, stuff so they are doing some research and then they are referring my videos so, so so it depends it can be seen by anyone so i need to keep in uh, mind that i little bit help them as well or else any beginner or somebody who is doing a research for their phd thesis or something so because uh, you will be struck i know that also <laughs> because you may get uh, some amount of assistance from your uh, you know mentors uh, but other than that you need somebody who is hands-on so this is often an issue anyone who does phd i have seen and i got many students also so this is what or else it will be seen by some uh, architect suddenly he need to find something over here and then he need to use this learning curve in his architecting his stack or his modules which is meant to do, do something else he's not copying this he may use this uh, as a reference and he may do it in some other way in his stuff so it will be referred by any architect sometimes even a cto uh, so anyone actually so which is why sometimes if i tell anything meant for beginners i exclusively tell that if you are a beginner this is how a code walk is done and this is how a network stack or any production like code is written so it will have many layers but it is also easy to understand not to confuse and um, you don't need to rely on any books and nothing as such code itself is there uh, this is more than enough for you to get you know sort of understanding the more sp time you spend and more prints or anything you put i i'm not a person who like much extensive debugging and all so i mean debugging tools and all if i want to learn something on this i may put any printers i can do some uh, inserting my own modules i can write um, and then i can insert them and i can 
see where it takes me inside so this is what so i can we can do those things as well so this is what so with this i would like to conclude this episode in my upcoming episode we can go much uh, deeper in this uh, rip itself because it's a very easy example we can take uh, and explore much deeper and then we can come back and we can explore uh, about the running context of this um, quagga stack and then again we can go back to this lip folder and as well as uh, zebra a folder and we can explore uh, some of the features and as well as uh, apis over there i mean some apis as you see now uh, some are very baseline and some are like intermediate apis will be used by feature level modules okay see this is a feature level module you have this rip zebra this is the actual stack which uses all this subset of modules okay so it is using this subset module this rip d.c and the rip d.c is using that baseline libraries whether it is some sort of link list or somewhere you need to sort and somewhere you need to do something else it may use that you know baseline libraries uh, which is written in that lib folder and sometimes if you find any uh, apis uh, which is already available then you don't need it in the library so sometimes you can borrow some third party library code and you can use them and you can exclude uh, writing such repetitive code inside your lib folder so this is what sometimes you need to do some sorting or some string level operation you can use any existing string function and then you don't need to write your own custom function so anything is possible so sometimes if you these things are common uh, if you are porting this into kernel space sometimes kernel may have some features you can use those features you don't need to rewrite those apis inside this library kernel have generic library functions to do uh, list type data types and uh, sometimes even link list and uh, many things kernel have that because it has network stack it has uh, storage and uh, many things so kernel have such you know independent you know multi purpose apis as well as modules inside the kernel space so that is why if you port this suppose there is a case that if you are putting inside the kernel space you can remove some of this repetitive code if you are putting in user space you need to add and in case if you are taking this and dumping it on some vxworks or some third party operating system uh, the os may have some extra features or else it may lack some features in that case you need to write or else you need to explore as a part of your reporting operation so it again it depends on case by case your exact situation basis so with this i would like to conclude this episode uh, in case if you want to discuss anything uh, be in touch via mail and in case if you are interested to join the classes uh, send an overview about yourself you can attach your resume in case if you are working and in case if you are a student you can also send your education background in case if you are doing masters or else a doctorate you can mention your uh, previous work experience and the previous qualification so this will give me an insight and i can focus uh, the exact topics uh, which you are in you know interested and in, uh, the skill sets you are interested to build uh, as a part of your uh, you know career or uh, your ongoing uh, you know uh, studies or whatever it is okay sometimes i do get students who are uh, doing uh, their masters and sometimes i get students who are doing their uh, phd research or thesis and then they are struck and stuff so in that case you can mention that what you are looking for and uh, most of the time of course i do get uh, students who are in the industry some are architects some are uh, just started their career and uh, some are into the industry for several years but they are looking for uh, a specific core uh, area they want to learn and they want to improve their skills or they want to just to do some research and they want to associate with me so that i can guide them in terms of doing their uh, research and stuff so anything is possible don't go too serious about whatever the courses i have put forward or mentioned it can be anything or else if you are looking for a very specific thing join as a lifetime member get that mentorship uh, let it be any topic any stuff we can discuss and do research you know together so so that's what so be in touch via mail thanks a lot for joining me stay tuned have a nice day bye bye